way we slice it, any way we look at it, this is him in Ethiopia, I mean, in, in Eritrea, with actually the head of state. Any way you slice it, any way you look at it, no matter what conclusions you come up with, it's a damn shame we lost this one mm -hmm. at the time that we did. And so let his life and his legacy be inspirational. He tells stories about how he stopped smoking, how he stopped drinking lean. He's like, yeah, when you're drinking so much lean, you know, you got to drink a lot of soda. We call it pop on the West Coast, call it soda in the Midwest. Yeah, drink a lot of that, say cold drink in Nashville. What they call it here, Doc? Is, is soda here? So you got to drink a lot of that, we got a lot of sugar. He's like, and I'm a skinny dude. Skinny dudes with pop bellies look funny, you know? So, but he was saying how he was able to influence his whole crew to start shifting their diet and shifting their life habits, right? So just take notes that no matter where you are, where you're coming from, you can refine yourself. In fact, you should take pride in self-refining. Remember the first time I went home, I went to undergrad. I went to undergrad at Fisk, bless you. I went to undergrad at Fisk in Nashville from Cincinnati. And uh, I got there, and I got home for the first Christmas break. And one of our boys was like, oh, nigga, you changed. I said, thanks, man. Mm -hmm. Like, real talk, because otherwise, I wasted a lot of time and money, right? So self-refine, oh, you think you're better than somebody. The only person I think I'm better than is who I used to be. Right? Right? Right, <laughs> period. Right, <so>, period. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying, though. Walk with that, y'all. And just understand, this game is short. Right? Some of us in the last two minutes, we don't even know it. And I hope I ain't being prophetic about my own life. But who knows? Right? And so live it to the fullest, constantly trying to improve yourself. Expand your perspective of what yourself actually is. Man with the capital M. Mm. Woman with the capital W. The totality of your being. Mind, body, and soul. They keep us so locked into this physical joint. Looking at the body. In psychology, they keep us locked so much into that brain-based understanding of psychology. The word psychology actually means the study of the soul. Mm -hmm. The study of the soul. So now you're saying, well, dang, what is this soul thing? Let your journey begin. It's real out there, y'all. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> What's your name again? My name again? Yeah. Jeff Menzi. Yeah. Jeff Menzi, tis I. But y'all go hard. Y'all here at Howard University. Y'all got one of the dopest scholars on the planet as your professor. Y'all got to understand that. If y'all don't already. Real humble dude, but off the chain. Mm -hmm. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Genius status right here single-handedly responsible for producing black conscious PhDs that go out and do stuff in this world, y'all. It's a treasure right here. I mean, I'm gonna use these last few minutes to sing his praises because I know what he did for me. Mm. He shook me up one time and I talked about him in one of my books. I think I talked about him in two of my books. But he wrote the foreword to my latest book and he talked about me, which was, which was an honor. Matter of fact, Doc, I gotta tell you this, but after you sent me your foreword, I was like, oh shit. I went back and I added a whole chapter to the book. <laughs> but I had to make sure that I was living up to that standard, you know, that he put in the forward. I'm like, all right, let me make sure I don't make him look bad, like he's supporting some huff. Mm. Right? So I literally added a whole chapter after reading his forward. Mm. But he told me a long time ago, we was at a graduate student conference, and it was a black graduates and psychology conference. We was up in Michigan. And uh, I just made a presentation. And I was always that one that was just like, kind of pushed the envelope. My orientation is African psychology. So we up there and I'm talking that black stuff, boom, boom, boom. And Dr. Rell said, uh, he said, yeah, it's interesting, ain't it? I said, yeah, it is. He said, well, just realize that a lot of these folks are being trained up to go against you. Dang, so it's kind of like crushing and inspirational all at the same time to let me know I need to do something. And the other thing he told me is when I was working on my dissertation, I was almost done. Dr. Rell said, he always come up real, real quiet too, just like. <laughs> yeah. He said, guess you can see that light at the end of the tunnel, huh? I said, man, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. He said, you better make sure it ain't a train coming. <laughs> and guess what it was? It was a train coming. Oh. It was a train coming. Somebody didn't want to sign. Mm. I make all white people look bad. I said, well, I love you, Dr. Such and Such, and you white. Oh, give me the paper and have to sign. <laughs> they had to get it. But real talk, it was a heads up that he gave me that only wisdom can provide. Mm -hmm. It's a serious dude right here, y'all. Appreciate you, Dr. Harrell, for inviting me to the class, man. I love you, brother.
So I only brought two of them. These are my last two books. Let me get them. One of my fifth book is Symbolically Speaking, Volume One, African Lodge Number One. So it's about the relationship between Freemasonry and African spirituality, right? And so I was initiated as an African priest in two cultures before I became a Freemason. And then I initiated into the third one after being a 32nd degree Mason. So I have a unique perspective of approaching African spirituality as just an American African who used to think he was a nigga, and then approaching Freemasonry as an initiated African priest, and then approaching another spiritual system as a Freemason and an initiated priest. And so I was able to see how all these layers overlap with each other. And also realize that going through the Masonic Lodge, I realized, man, this is one of the few places where you're gonna see intergenerational black men yeah, like, like refined and standing on the square. Like there was a brother, he was like pushing 80 something years old when I was being brought in. And he came over to me, he said, you know what I like the most about this? I said, what's that? He was kind of reminding me of you, Dr. Real. He was like, this is where a man with a third grade education can teach a PhD son. I said, damn, huh? I said, I'm sitting at your feet to learn too. It was just pure wisdom. Mm -hmm. So that's what this is. And I put some of my dissertation in here as well. I did my dissertation on the use of African-centered, well, culturally specific rites of passage programs to impact negative uh, and risky substance abuse and sexual behaviors. And so we found that it was significant. Strictly giving children cultural knowledge was enough to make them reduce their participation in substance use and abuse, as well as risky sexual behaviors. And so some of that is in here too. And then uh, my latest book is Practical Psychology. It's called Practical Psychology 101, a psychological manual for Black Lives Matter and all other social movements. Mm -hmm. And this is one that Dr. Harrell wrote the forward to. And so, uh, I was encouraged, I was inspired to write this book as I was watching some of the protests that was taking place. I think this was in North Carolina, this particular one. And they had like an aerial view. They saw all people like marching through the streets and stuff. And they didn't realize it because they were on the ground, but it was like a pre-mapped out route that they were being led through. Like rats in a maze almost. And I said, man, people need to be more aware of what's happening. You know, you're in the middle of it thinking you're actually doing something and you ain't doing nothing. It's all prescribed. That video, when they was dancing that way to the song, that's why you danced that way to that song. They tell you how to feel about stuff, and you feel that way about it. Mm -hmm. They teach you what to value. Amos Wilson is famous for, like, for saying that our tastes are produced for us, meaning you know what you crave and what you desire is actually being produced for you. And so I said, you know what? Let me take psychology and put it in some very practical terms and bring it forward from the perspective of the African-centered psychologists, from the Western perspective, as well as for those who are interested in involving themselves in social justice movements. And so that's how this book was born. And Dr. Harrell blessed me and he said he would do the forward and he did it. And uh, he talked about something that I said to him. I, came up, I was coming to class from Howard. Uh, I walked past a sister, she was a homeless sister that used to live, like, she used to just be on the streets on Georgia Avenue. And there was this great, you know, like the, the screen on the ground. You know how the heat comes up out of it sometimes? And so she was laying on that joint. Mm. And uh, you know, we both had seen her. And Dr. Harrell had mentioned it to me. Neither one of us know why if she came up or whatever. But he said that I said uh, three or five words. I can't remember how many it was. That, but basically, I was telling him that, that the sister is a soldier. You know, she's a soldier. And so, of course, Dr. Harrell, being who he is, he turned that around and was just really looking at it like, you know, our wounded soldiers are everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we need more people who are able to recognize and acknowledge folks who and what they really are, and not necessarily judging them, as I said earlier, for what's currently happening in their lives and understand that we are all battle injured. We're wounded. And we need more people like yourselves who are seeking to increase their own consciousness in order that they may help to increase other people's consciousness so that we can all eventually end up doing better in this life. Right? <laughs> and so that's the underlying message in that book. I cover about four, five areas of psychology. Personality, personality and identity together, emotions, uh, consciousness, and then learning in the classical and uh, opera uh, conditions.